Good afternoon, everybody. Right, well, hopefully you've been stimulated by both the last speaker and also by some coffee and sugar at the break time. And this last session will hopefully be quite stimulating. Well, not the last session, actually. We've got two more sessions. And uh, hopefully this session will be stimulating. And the next session will hopefully be stratospheric, because we're talking about space travel. But for this session, uh, we've got something which is uh, taking us into maybe fairly unexplored territories uh, for many of us, which is talking about the blockchain and how it applies to the energy world. So I'd be del I'm delighted to invite on the stage uh, three people that I've just got to know, but uh, hopefully we'll get to uh, find out quite a lot more. Uh, so Francois, Alexander, and Vincent would like to join me on the stage. Excellent. Now we've got, you're gonna have to play pass the parcel on the uh, on the the microphones because uh, we've got two between three. So um, with this area, what I'd like to do actually is just do a little bit of audience participation before we get we go any further. I'm going to use quite a, a 20th century version of what we were doing actually earlier, which was a polling. So when it comes to the, the blockchain. Um, how many people here would say that they know lots about the blockchain? I'm looking at one person. There you go. Two people. Mm, two people know lots about it. Maybe, maybe a, few, a few more. Oh, good, good. Um, who knows a little about the blockchain? Okay. And who knows basically nothing beyond that there's a word called the blockchain? Okay, a few, a few honest people as well. Wonderful. <laughs> Now, what, uh, one of the things that when I was uh, talking to the gentleman before the uh, session today, um, said that we've got an opportunity here to not only uh, talk about the specific topic, blockchain in energy sector, which for me is about uh, a way that citizens, as I was talking at the start of the day, can get involved in dealing with climate change by empowering them. But it's also, we can demystify a bit about the blockchain itself and what is it. So we're going to start by with some building blocks. And the first building block is going to be, what is the blockchain? And so what I'll do is ask Francois to uh, give us a little bit about what the blockchain is, and then we'll get a, a little bit more audience interaction, actually, to get a few more questions from you, which will uh, premise us for the rest of it. So, Francois. Sure. Uh, thank you, Adam. Um, so basically, I'm repeating a little bit what um, we said just earlier, uh, but blockchain is uh, just a scientific word, let's call it like that, or a fancy word for a database. And this database is actually available and made available to uh, each participant into the network. So you have a number of nodes which are actually participating to the network and sustaining this network. In the case of SolarCoin, then again, um, this would be represented by the number of solar installations which are currently out there and publishing information to that database. Again, everybody receives this information, and whether it's a transaction or, um, in our case, publication of solar energy values, this information is made available to everybody. So in essence, the beautifulness of, of this uh, decentralized database is that everybody has to agree on its validity. It's Think about it as a trust tool and as a trust factor because it enables people to validate um, the information, whether it's a transaction for goods and services or whether it's a publication of uh, solar production data. In the case of um, R3, for example, which is, a, um, well, in the finance world, the blockchain, which essentially is trying to replace the SWIFT protocol, it will actually allow people and banks, in, in essence, to start um, settling and doing clearing in custody in a much more efficient way than what the current transaction systems and the SWIFT protocol are currently doing. So think about it as being a trust tool, but a more effective tool than what is currently 
um, in place at this moment in time then. Excellent. So I think that's, that, that really gets it for me. It's a trust tool. Brilliant. Okay. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to crowdsource some of the questions that might be in your head because I've got a bit of a why, who, how, who and where questions that we'll, we'll kind of do it through. But what I'd like to find out from you. So what I'd like to do, rather than just kind of sitting there thinking in your own heads, I'd like to maybe chat just for a couple of minutes to the people that are around you about what is it they'd like to know about the blockchain. And I can't go around everybody, but I'm just going to go around two or three people, get a few things, like what you'd like to know about the blockchain and energy. So I'll leave that to you to spend that, and I'll get some answers. No, no, sorry. If you talk to the people next to you about it, and then feed back to me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what do you want to know about... Oh, wait a second. <laughs> just turned on. <laughs> I can't talk. You're perfectly... I mean, you have to finish your stuff. Yeah. And then, then you're perfectly connected. So basically, for you, I mean, unless you go into the very lengthy negotiations with the uh, monopolies. Yeah. So if you don't want to do it, and you think that, okay, I am a startup and I have to leave this budget, etc., et then through the blockchain. And now it's a lot of brewing, uh, basically, to, 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 to create for your very first time. Yeah. So, Probably alone you will not pull up the blockchain solution of framework by yourself, but you don't have to do it. Okay then, everybody. If you start wrapping up your little chats, I'd love to give you longer, but um, we've only got a very limited time. Another 25 minutes to go in this Suggestion. conversation. <laughs> okay then. So, if you can have everybody's attention. Right, we've got one person straight away wanting to ask a question. We've got two over there. Who's going to ask the third question? I want a, a show of a hand. Who, uh, who wants to ask the third question? Somebody sticking their hands up or they're just waving at somebody? No, they're just waving at somebody. So this lady here, what question would you like? Have we got a microphone, sorry, that we can have for this lady here? Okay, so, I mean, so what's the question that you're interested in getting answered? Um, hello, hello. <coughs> I think it does. Oh, okay. Shout out. So, um, we would like to have like, a concrete uh, example of how can blockchain be applied in the energy sector, like to understand it better. Great. Excellent. Okay, then. And down at the front here. Yes. Um, how can the crowd control <coughs> the prices of energy? Yeah, uh, crowd control price. <coughs> That's interesting. Okay. And then maybe a third question. Who's got a... You've all been talking to each other, so I know there's more questions out there. So what, what's the third question that could be asked? Yep, at the back there. It's a bit... <laughs> I, can be loud, just... I think you can just shout. Um, oh, okay, it's a bit related to the first question, but maybe a bit, a bit more personal. What's like your favorite example of a blockchain concept? And uh, I mean from the user uh, side of the, the story. Right, great, okay. So I think actually with the structure that we've got, we might be able to just answer all of those. So the next uh, section is actually going to be why blockchain for energy. And actually you've, but you've met Francois and uh, Victor, but uh, you haven't met Alexander. So I think, Alexander, if you can just give us a very quick summary of yourself and why, why we, you've been asked on the panel. And then if you can give me an example of uh, something, and I know one that we were talking about earlier this week was particularly rang true for me. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you, Adam. Um, yeah, I'm, um, I maybe already a blockchain veteran, so I started to work on it in 2011. I've been uh, on the technical forefront of uh, several uh, startups. One connected to energy, I am a CTO currently of a company called Grid Circularity, is, which is exactly making the blockchain solutions for the energy market. And uh, for my recent company, it's called Sofito, which is basically merging uh, 
conventional banking card with the blockchain technology, but let's focus on, on the energy. Yeah, uh, the question was about um, one of the practical uh, application of blockchain in, in energy. Uh, as uh, uh, Francois mentioned, blockchain is sort of a, a database and uh, one nice thing about this that this database uh, that's also a protocol which allows different people which don't know each other uh, and don't trust each other make changes in this database and everyone will agree on this so basically you kind of distribute trust among the participants which don't trust each other and for instance if i make a change in this database and we are building to the same blockchain, uh, we, uh, we basically all agree on this. That's a protocol. But, and it actually, actually makes this database not effective, not efficient, as efficient as a central one. Um, so and now imagine uh, on the energy markets, what is going on? We have um, uh, TSO and DSO, there was several times mentioned, transmission system op uh, service operators and distribution service operators. These are those companies which sit between uh, the energy producers, generators, and uh, power plants, and then consumers. Let's say, imagine big factories or cities or towns. Um, so they basically try to match the energy produced and energy consumed because uh, grid, it's like a bucket where you pour water. You cannot, if there is a 10 liter bucket, you cannot put more water, pour more water in this bucket. The same goes with electricity. So if you actually generate more electricity, what is going on, the frequency in your network rises from 50 gertz, and if it's 52 gertz, actually the blockout happens. And also if you consume too much, you have to compensate with generation because again, if it's 48 gertz instead of 50, again, the blackout happens. Uh, so now, uh, to match this generating and uh, a consumption capacities, we have this uh, transmission or distribution service operators, and they're the black box. They actually a communication overhead. We are sitting here in the bank, and I compare them in financial sectors, TSO and DSOs to banks, because actually they're between those who has money and those who needs money. Yeah. So, and uh, you can establish a trust database and relationship using the blockchain protocol between the uh, generators and the um, uh, cons consumers of electricity directly without these guys, which will have can establish. Uh, uh, Trust, trusted and encrypted protocol between each other. For instance, if there is overconsumption, we, we can come to a notion, for instance, a virtual power plant. Uh, there was earlier mentioned in the presentation a uh, supply and demand system. And what is going on, for instance, if in a particular area, let's say in West Flanders, uh, there are huge fridge installations. So we have some vegetables and they have to be frozen and then brought to the supermarket. Um, so, but imagine that uh, wind stops to blow in the offshore and there is un this electricity not supplied enough so the frequency starts to drop in particular area and these fridges you can in fact switch off for say half an hour that the minus 18 degrees in the fridge will drop to minus 16 and this frozen chicory will will it will be no harm for these wedges there so, and this power plant, in fact, so it will compensate for this. Uh, so it will be supply demand response. Um, so if we can have a, a, a meter of a frequency of a particular place, uh, operated by the smart contract, which can establish communication to the technological process of the factory, we can, in fact, uh, make an intervention what is going on in the network, like banks do the same with finance. See this analysis? when, for instance, in some areas you have some land to build, so what they do, they do mortgages and people start building. The same uh, we can do uh, on the protocol level. We can establish that this system is balanced and we don't have to have one single trusted party trusted party, like distribution system operator, like a grid operator, to actually manage it, because there are some mistakes, etc. And since it is uh, an immutable ledger, so nothing which has been written there can be changed 
uh, retroactively. We can then see who was doing what and see, for instance, who was in charge of some breakouts in the network or something like this. So for instance, virtual power plant and what we are building in Grid Singularity, it will be just an app because now it is a very, very difficult concept to realize and that will stabilize the grid. And that means that we don't have to pay for balancing uh, uh, balancing capacities which are included in our electricity bill. For end users, just a uh, cheaper electricity bill. Fascinating, fascinating. So hopefully that, well, that's hopefully starting to answer one of the kind of concrete examples of how we can have something that's very, not concrete, uh, which is a virtual power station, but actually can be a massive benefit. So what I'm, I'm interested in uh, and curious about now is how blockchain for energy. So how, how can it be realized? So maybe, Vincent, you haven't had a chance to talk yet. Could you give us a, an example uh, of how blockchain can be uh, realized? Yes. Um, well, at, at first, I believe, and it relates a bit to the question maybe of Etienne uh, as well, is that what is really important in order to have the crowd be able to participate in this new energy future uh, is that we uh, implement the technologies and the means in order to do so. Because today, when I have solar, solar panels on my roof, I can't control any of the prices out there because I'm just producing partly for myself and partly yeah, for the grid. But today, and every day actually, I'm not at home. So my solar panels, they are producing for being not at home. Maybe I would like to set my own price, which will be cheaper than the cheapest on my graph I showed uh, this afternoon. Um, and I'm happy to sell it to my neighbor because he's retired, he's at home, he needs electricity. And I'm happy to sell it at a, at a lower price than anything in the market. So what we need to do is make sure that the crowd will be able to participate in, in, this, in this new future. And the first thing in order to, be, uh, to, to enable that, I believe that it's important to talk about this technology and to make sure that there's awareness uh, that it's out there, but also that people uh, realize what is possible with this technology. And then we need to build, of course, easy to use tools and services, etc., in order to uh, uh, make users uh, 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 yeah, use it actually. You, you can compare it maybe a bit to the internet. We, in, as, as, a, as a majority, we got to know and to use the internet end of the 90s, but it has been existing for tens of years before, but mm. nobody understood how it works, nobody um, was, was willing to, to, well, not nobody, but uh, most of us, uh, willing to try to understand, and when we started using it was the moment that there was an easy interface being the internet browsers in order to benefit from the from the possibilities and i think blockchain should yeah at least go through the same phases in order to create things that people can benefit from the technology um, without necessarily perfectly understanding how it works but people have to understand what it can mean for them yeah, excellent. I mean, that's a really nice example. It gives us something that we can relate to about how the internet, for years, it was only done, used by kind of scientists and uh, governments, things like that. And so I think, uh, have we got any other just quick examples, just maybe a minute or two, from, from either of you two guys uh, about the how the blockchain for energy? Uh, I, I, I will talk, but I will use the solar panel, uh, a solar okay. panel uh, as uh, um, example, so to, to compensate. Just so, a few minutes, huh? yeah. So, so basically, imagine uh, again. I, I, I like this always merger of energy and fintech because I, I actually work in these two sectors. And imagine I have a solar panel farm, and I want to refinance my loan, and I've been, uh, let's say, uh, managing this installation for five years. And I come to a bank, and bank actually has to assess um, how good manager I was of this panel. Maybe I was not washing my panels, not switching them, not maintaining. Where there was snow, and I was just simply forgetting to remove the snow. And uh, but how the bank will assess it? Because for banks, if I'm a bad manager, it's simply a higher percentage on the loan they give me. If I'm a good manager, they can give me more competitive price. 
so what is going on? Uh, they can come to me and say, look, Alexander, you are, you are owner of the factory. Just give us an Excel sheet, and we will see uh, what was the so radiation versus the production of electricity. But actually, it's me. I'm in a biased party, so I can, of course, give them a perfect uh, numbers that I'm a very good manager. So the bank can go to, say, uh, Deloitte or PwC companies, which will do an external audit. And then the bank would pay a lot of money, so, and a lot of time will be lost. And uh, they can get some conclusions on that and then give me a percentage. And add, of course, the, the price uh, and the bill of this uh, Deloitte on to, uh, basically, I will pay as the, as the loan taker. If I would be registering all this information in blockchain, and we, uh, I guess, get out of, out of the today presentation that is an immutable database, uh, the only thing I can do, I can just come to a bank and say, here, here is my private key, which would allow you retrospectively to see what has been registered at every moment of time. And since I have nothing to do with the data which has been re re registered there, because I cannot retrospectively change it, and we mathematically can prove that actually it's always been like this at the moment, from the moment, from the second it was uh, recorded there. So for the bank, it will be a matter of seconds to see all the numbers and then to see how risky or good manager I am. And that would just, again, decrease the uh, price for the loan I would get, and I would decrease the price for my end users. So one of the solar panel example. Great. That's excellent. Thank you. So, so now the, the next question I'd like to ask is around uh, who will make the money from blockchain? Because one of the things is that, like for a great example uh, analogy with the internet, is that the internet theoretically could have empowered all us of, as of citizens to make money from it. And there's some people who are making a living out of it. But we've also got uh, the kind of unicorns, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the entrepreneurs like those leaders of Twitter and Facebook that have made, become billionaires. Even I'm sure there's going to be the, uh, a trillionaire soon. And what I'm interested in is how do we uh, take this opportunity for democratization and create it so that we can go distributed more equitably ac across the, like the, this term prosumers, producers and consumers, rather than ending up with a entrepreneurial blockchain energy unicorns. Um, so maybe, Francois. Yeah. Sure, ha I'm very happy to answer that question. And building on what Alex is also saying is that, well, basically there, there has to be a means of incentivizing for people to produce solar energy and, well, participating, I would say, in, in blockchain technology. So to the extent that you're incentivizing for good deeds, we believe that you're going to see a lot of these um, social utility coins out there, uh, one of them being SolarCoin. Again, uh, that's free advertisement. Thank you. <laughs> but at the same time, we, we believe there's going to be carbon coin, for example, which is already starting as well, and by which you, you actually well, incentivize people for using another means of transport rather than this means of transport, and so effectively displacing uh, carbon dioxide. So in essence, what it means is that, uh, well, carbon dioxide, carbon coin is a very good example, but you could think about tree coin, for example, for people who help produce oxygen or planting trees and things like that. Again, this is very specific to the digital cryptocurrency aspect of blockchain technology but answering in answering this question what we believe is that Cancel. you're going to have some social utility Cancel. coins out there to help people incentivize for good deeds then yeah anybody else got a, a quick answer to the uh, where who will make the money from blockchain well, and basically it, it has the opportunity of having a lot of people participating into it because of its decentralized nature, so peer-to-peer um, -peer, uh, nature, not necessarily unicorns, as, as you mentioned. Right. Yeah, you, uh, with unicorns, of course, all the money go to California. Um, yeah. uh, I, what I think that blockchain is enabling transparency. 
So, for instance, I can ultimately uh, distinguish uh, with the blockchain technology uh, whether I can, how much per month I consume electricity from my solar panel, from the solar panel of my neighbor, and from, let's say, somewhere in the area fossil fuel power plant. And I can actually set then the priorities. Okay, I first buy my solar panel because I want to, you know, uh, basically return on my investment. And then I want to incentivize my neighbor to sell his excess of electricity. And also not to overload network because otherwise my neighbor or me, we will have to, uh, you know, push this energy into the grid and somebody somewhere far away can uh, consume this electricity. And only on the last turn I uh, consume uh, let's say dirty energy and I, I can see this transparency and I can uh, set the automatic even set of rules what exactly I want so I don't want to sit with the switches or control what the sun is going on there will be a smart contract which uh, executes the way I program it so and if we can make this good interfaces to the with the blockchain technology because blockchain what is a database yeah it's just a pile of code I mean it's, it's just a alphanumeric gibberish so as long as it's not connected to the physical reality uh, it's worth nothing and the with the technologies uh, for instance like June uh, we, 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 we have actually exactly what is, what is going on. So they have a potential to implement blockchain technology and the smart contract automatically for their customers will be making a decision, uh, trading essentially the, or making a trade-off for the most effective uh, energy bill. Just through the, and so it is bringing a lot of transparency because now it's all concentrated in the banks of energy world which are the grid operators. And they monetize mostly and, or, and often uh, th their business is basically monetized on obscuring this information, you see? Yeah, great stuff. Okay, so final question then, um, because when sitting down for this, I was really uh, delighted to be asked to chair this panel because it, it's expanding my knowledge. And uh, maybe it's something that I can become one of those people who could maybe make a bit out of this and become uh, a prosumer. Um, and be able to be part of this new revolution. So I'd be interested in from any of the panel, um, and it's going to have to be quick, we've only got three or four minutes left, is where can people look to take advantage of this, that, and I'm going to be taking notes, um, where we could go away after today and actually do something to, to utilize blockchain and particularly energy sector. So who, who wants to go? Yeah, Vincent maybe? Well, uh, there's there's one one really really good uh, website where you can find everything you need, and uh, it's called uh, Google. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, actually, can, can we just go back? What would, what the question will be though? What search terms would you recommend people putting in to find on Google? <laughs> well, depending on what you want to apply blockchain to, yeah. if you want to apply it to energy, I would type in blockchain in energy. Right. But Simple you can type in any anything else: blockchain uh, for notaries, blockchain okay. for uh, legal counseling, blockchain for anything that has central controlling yeah. and that you would like to decentralize. Excellent. You well, put that in front of or behind blockchain, and then. I like your answer because it's actually it's very empowering. It's like guys, go off and do it yourself, right, Francois? Yeah. Sorry. Please. Sorry. <laughs> Finally. Because you you just asked a question about unicorns and and digital and internet and so on. And yeah, it's true that there are some companies that grew out of that and became unicorns. But on the other hand, the internet gave us a lot of power because now we can go to a site that's called Google and yeah, they make a mo lot of money, but they enable us to find all these of information that we couldn't find before right. or not that easily. Very right, true, right. yeah, Francois. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And um, well, uh, again, I mean, in, in, in the case of uh, solar energy and because this is also the topic here, um, solar coin is, is really just the, the tip of the iceberg of what you're going to be able to do. Um, Alex and, and June as well then have both um, discussed about uh, future implementations of a technology through that. So again, there's the incentivizing, uh, the way to, well, getting basically a better return on investment out of it for a solar installation owner. 
But then there's, as a prosumer, there's also the, the use of the electricity. And so what I think you should take out of this uh, today is essentially that the future is here and that this future is actually you being empowered to making use of your data and in this case, well, energy being produced and being fed into the grid. You get to decide how you use this energy and, well, if you want to store it into batteries, feed it in, into the grid, and on top of that, being incentivized for um, for using this energy. Then, um, I see there's only one short. Yeah, minute well, left one minute left. So, I mean, actually, I think that's quite a good note to finish on. Unless, you, did you have anything specific? Um, no. No, that's great because I, I think that was brilliant. Just how you summarised that, there, Francois. That was, I was like, great. Well, because I've got a final question that I'd like to ask the audience. Is that one of the things I was fascinated that. By starting in this in 2011, Alexander actually uh, is now a veteran, um, which kind of shows how brand new this is, and he, he yeah, absolutely is that. Now, obviously, we're not veterans now after hearing these guys talk for half an hour, but uh, can I just have a show of hands? Who feels a little bit more comfortable if you're in the bar and somebody says to you tonight, well, what's this blockchain thing about? Who would be able to feel as though they could talk a little bit more confidently about it? It's just a show of hands. Right, okay, that's good, that's good, great. Okay, like, that's, that for me, that's job done, that we've helped demystify this a little bit. Um, so it just remains for me to say thank you for your questions and your attention, um, but particularly thank you for my three colleagues here um, for helping demystify and maybe help you become the prosumers of tomorrow, literally, um, uh, in this new, brand new world of blockchain energy. Thank you. Great, thank you very much.